Hey y'all and welcome back to the video. This is Little Faith, Big Blessings. I am Aniqua and I talk about all things faith-based, motherhood, and living like Christ. So I want you to think for a second, if you were on a deserted island, what are the top three things that you would take with you? You can pause the video, you know, think about it for a moment. What are the top three things that you would take with you if you were on a deserted island? Do you have your three things? Of those three things, the number one thing, did you say your Bible? Pretty sure you didn't. I know that like throughout the years, I have always gotten that question or I have heard that question on social media. If you were on a deserted island, what are some things that you would bring with you? But no one has ever said a Bible. You know, they would say their phone or books or kids, including myself. We would say all these different things, but nobody would ever say the Bible. No one ever said their faith, you know, that they would be provided for, that they would be safe or anything like that. Um, and it's interesting that no one ever says these things. But if you think about it, when you die, what can you actually bring with you? So think about that. Think about that. When you die, of those things that you name, can you actually bring any of those things with you? The answer is no. So this reminds me of the story of the um, rich young ruler in Matthew 19, where he was asking Jesus, you know, how, first of all, he called him good teacher. And Jesus was like, nobody is good but the father. So he was saying, how can I get into the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus told him, you know, keep those five commandments that are talking about, you know, in relation to how we act with other people, how we associate with other people. And the young ruler was like, I did all those things. Now what? Like, I've done all those things since I was a child, since childhood. I've never, you know, went against what those things say. So Jesus told him, sell all of your things, all of your possessions, give them to the less fortunate and follow me. What did the rich young ruler do? He walked away. He walked away because he had a lot of possessions. He prized his possessions over the kingdom of heaven, which if y'all know how many spiritual gifts we get and that are waiting for us in the kingdom of heaven and some of them that we already have now while we're here on earth, they're worth more than any of the possessions that we have. And so this is where the um, commandment of there should be no other gods before me. And it's not just any other gods. There should be nothing put before me. And here we are, this rich young ruler, not knowing it, that he's putting his possessions and all of his riches before God. So that's idolatry. And if you think about the things that you have in your everyday life, you know, the things that you say that you can just absolutely not live without, well, isn't that idolatry? Because technically you can live without all these things. I mean, of course, without food and water, but God will provide that for you. I'm talking about like material things like your car, um, your house. Of course, you need shelter. God will provide that for you. Um, it could be your clothes, your shoes, your handbags, um, your hats, whatever it is that you have a bunch of things of that you really value. You know, I know people keep like, I don't want to call them shrines, but they have like a collection. There you go, collection. They have a collection of whatever, right? And I used to be that person. I used to have like a collection of fiction books. When I say collection, I mean collection. What did I do with all of those books? I'll tell you, I either sold them on Pango Books, I sold them at half price books, or there's a website called Better World Books, which is a thrift store for books they have drop boxes and i put hundreds and hundreds of books in them because i realized i'm idolizing these books and i did i had an addiction to buying more and more books and it was like this is this is an idol you know it never clicked in my mind like you know i'm reading i'm not doing anything to hurt anyone but in essence when you think about it it's hurting god because i'm putting these books before him you know i would read these books i wouldn't even pick up my bible but I would be quick to pick up one of these books. 
And so whatever it is that you just find yourself collecting more and more of, that is an idol. Whether you, you know, believe it or not, that is an idol. And so it made me think about, you know, people who, prime example, people who are hoarders. I don't know if you've seen that show Hoarders where, you know, you have people come in who are trying to help um, people clean their houses and their house is, is just full of stuff that they've accumulated over a certain period of time because of something tragic that happened. And they just collect all this stuff and they don't want to part with it. And oftentimes after the show, when they do the um, check-in or catch up with this person, a lot of these people would go back to hoarding. They would go back to collecting things. And it could just be random stuff. It, a lot of times it's just random stuff. It's not even just like collecting a whole bunch of just one particular type of item. It's just a bunch of stuff that they're collecting because to, in their minds, they think it's sentimental value, but they're idolizing all these things that they're collecting because at the end of the day, when they die, none of that stuff is going to go with them. It can't go in the coffin with them. It can't go in the ground with them. I mean, it can, but essentially that stuff is not going to be with them whether they go to heaven or hell you know it's not going to be with you the only thing that's going to be with you is your soul that's it that reminds me of like you know long long time ago when you had the egyptian pharaohs and kings and things like that and they would be buried in coffins with their riches, with their gold, with their, um, what are they called? The cups. I can't even think of it. It's on the tip of my tongue too. They're goblets, you know, they're gold goblets. And they're, they believed that in the afterlife, that they would have these things with them, that if they buried them in the coffin with them when they died, that they would have them in the afterlife. Well, obviously, they know by now that they don't have that stuff with them. And it's like how, in their minds, how did they think that being buried with this stuff was going to also carry over into what they call the afterlife? And so I think about how, you know, people who have a lot of money, I know Jesus said that it would be, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich people to get into heaven. And he said this right after that, which is in uh, Matthew 19, verse 23. Jesus said to his disciples, truly, I tell you, it would be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you think about rich people, what do they spend their money on? these big houses, these million dollar homes that take up a large plot of land for one person. One person, you live in this huge estate because it's not even a house. It's an estate or a palace by yourself. Why? All this money and all you can think to do is buy a house, buy a bunch of cars, um, buy a bunch of name brand clothes, buy a bunch of jewelry. Um, have this huge pool, buy a private jet. You have all this money. All you're doing is buying things for yourself. And that's like Jesus told the disciples, the poor will always be with you. As long as these people who are making money are making more money and spending it on things for themselves instead of trying to help other people, then there will always be the poor. And it makes me think like these rich people, I would really like to talk to them and ask them like, you know, for one, you obviously cannot be a person of Christ because Christ did not have any prized possessions. He really honestly did not have any possessions. If you think about it, and it just came to me, like Jesus did not have any possessions. He had literally nothing as he was traveling. You know, he probably had like a pack or something with some clothes in it, you know, or like an extra pair of shoes. But he and his disciples, when they were traveling from place to place, they didn't have anything with them. Nothing. They didn't live in mansions. They didn't live in houses. They traveled from place to place and would take up shelter with people who Jesus knew ahead of time that they were going to be there. 
he didn't have any possessions so it's like the people like rich people i want to really ask them you know why are you buying all these things with your money and not even that but when they die and they don't have you know like um descendants or family to give them money to where does that money go because a lot of times it does not go to charity so all this money your house your possessions if you have no descendants or no one to pass it on to where does all this stuff go did you think about that when you became rich you know, and it's so it's so funny because I used to always want to be rich. I used to always want to be famous. I used to always want to, you know, have everybody just know who I am to be on TV and things like that. And it's like most kids, right? You know, you want to be famous, especially today. Everybody wants to be YouTube famous, social media famous, what have you. But that's an idol. It is. Even as kids, and we probably didn't know this then, but even as kids when you know, our parents or grownups or whoever would ask us, who do we want to be or what do we want to be when we grow up? No kid says a follower of Christ. No kid says that. They say they want to be a doctor, a basketball player, a lawyer, an astronaut, what have you. But no one says a follower of Christ. And I know you're probably thinking like, Monique, well, you're really reaching. But no, seriously, think about it. Nobody ever says that. They want to be all these things except for a follower of Christ, a child of God. And it just makes me think of like how I grew up. And it's no one's fault. I really can't fault anyone for not knowing. You know, it's not willful, willful ignorance of, you know, the adults around me. But it's just making me realize like how many things did I idolize growing up? Boy bands, huge on B2K, Lil Bow Wow. Um... Tweety, I used to be a huge Tweety Bird fan. Like everything, Tweety that was my favorite thing. Uh, and even then, that brings up a whole other topic where someone asks you, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite type of music? What is your favorite book? What is your favorite this, that, and the other? And it's like, that's an idol. That's having a favorite something, that is an idol. Jesus had no favorites. It may seem like it because he had those disciples who were closest to him, but he had no favorites and God has no favorites. So I just want to leave y'all on this little note. Um, think about the things that you idolize in your life. Think about the, I'm talking about, mater I'm talking about tangible, material things that you idolize in your life. Yeah, it could be anything. Whatever it is that you say is your favorite of, or you just have to have, think about that and ask God, how can you get rid of that spirit of idolizing this particular thing? I hope that y'all have enjoyed this episode. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, be blessed.